Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking a little bit more about black holes and their unusual role and what we may think about the universe, specifically about dark matter. So today I'm going to revisit one of the old theories and talk a little bit more about our understanding of black holes and hopefully you learn something from this video as well. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So for this video, we're going to be using Beautiful Space Engine, which is a free app that you can download in the link below. And we're going to be exploring various black holes and talking about how they may actually influence our universe and how they actually might be this unusual dark matter that we're looking for to begin with. Now, this is not a new theory. This is actually something that has been around since uh, early 90s. And back in the days, scientists were very excited because they actually thought that maybe, just maybe, dark matter is black holes. Now, let's actually go and visit one of the black holes in Space Engine, one of the first discovered ones known as Cygnus X1. Now, this is actually one of the more well-studied black holes as well. And it's, uh, it's actually a binary system with, I believe, what seems to be a blue supergiant and a black hole orbiting around it. Now, one day this supergiant might also become a black hole, or at least a neutron star. But for now, it's actually uh, a system with one black hole and one large star. Now, in uh, February of 2016, something really interesting happened. We actually, for the first time in history, detected um, a collision between two black holes. And this was uh, pretty much everywhere in the news. This was kind of reported uh, by a lot of scientists. And what we've detected was something that basically looked like this. It was essentially a collision between two very, very uh, dense bodies, about 30 to 32 masses of the sun. And uh, these two bodies were basically black holes that we've never seen before. They were unusually structured and they were orbiting around one another. And it's something that we were looking for to begin with. So this so-called uh, LIGO or Laser Interferme Interferometric Gravitational Wave Observer um, was essentially looking for these uh, ripples in space-time, also known as gravitational waves. And... What this meant to us is that we have now discovered uh, colliding black holes. We've discovered binary black holes that basically collided and cre created these unusual waves. Now, this black hole that you see right here is actually relatively small. It's only about um, 94 kilometers in diameter uh, end to end, and it's basically only about 16 masses of sun, although it's actually possibly even smaller than that. Um, these small stellar black holes are actually very common, but anything 30 to 60 times the mass of Sun is unknown to us, and LIGO was able to detect these black holes. Now, when we detected those two black holes, we actually were very surprised to have found it so quickly. It literally happened almost right after LIGO was turned on. And since then... Uh, in about a year time, we actually found at least two more of these collisions, signifying that these colliding black holes are actually really, really common in, uh, in our universe. Now, we haven't seen any in our galaxy yet, because all of those were from other galaxies, but nevertheless, these collisions seem to happen a lot more often than, than we thought they do. This also suggests that there is a lot more black holes out there than we imagined, and what this also suggests is that there is actually a lot more of these unusually uh, mass black holes between 30 to 60 masses of our sun out there. Now, what does this all mean? Well, for one, it means that we don't really understand black holes that well just yet, and we also don't understand how many of these black holes were created in the beginning of the universe. Now, None of these are new theories, and these theories have been talked about previously, and they've also been explored and even disproven. So, for example, uh, back, I believe, in the late 90s, there was an experiment uh, by the name of Macho Experiment, and this was basically a telescope that was supposed to observe the skies and was supposed to look for um, all possible black holes in the night sky. Now, we actually didn't find that many. 
we thought there would be a lot of black holes in our night sky, but we didn't find a lot, and we actually found a lot less than we imagined. And so what this suggested to us is that uh, maybe just maybe black holes didn't really explain this whole dark matter business and maybe just maybe these black holes uh, that do exist out there could not really provide enough mass to explain uh, our understanding of dark matter as it is today. Now, what do I mean by this? If you don't really know what I'm talking about, it's the idea that, okay, let me just actually escape this for a second and zoom out of our galaxy just so I can show it to you. The idea is very simple. If we were to actually look at our own galaxy from a distance, or really any galaxy for that matter, we would see that the galaxy actually spins. Now, it doesn't spin here because Space Engine doesn't provide spinning galaxy just yet, but uh, let's actually just make it a little bit more visible. The galaxy spins around in such a way that the stars on the outskirts of the galaxy move a little bit too fast for us to uh, to account for um, when I use invisible matter. So basically, these stars on the outskirts, including our own sun, move faster than they should. And something is holding them together, something holds these galaxies together from falling apart. And this something is today known as dark matter. And the most recent theory on dark matter speculates that there is something called weakly interacting particles, or weakly interacting massive particles, also known as WIMPs, that might be these invisible particles that don't really interact with anything, that actually hold galaxies together, hold universe together, and basically are the dark matter. And we've spent trillions of dollars, we've spent a lot, a lot of money trying to find them. We've been looking for these particles for a very long time, including the most recent uh, LUX experiment that used this really super complex xenon chamber buried deep, deep, deep underneath the ground that was supposed to detect the interaction with these particles, and we actually thought we'd find it. And we haven't. We found nothing. There's not a single clue to these wimps, and there's not a single clue to understanding dark matter from that perspective just yet, or possibly ever. So, we might be returning back to the idea of black holes as a dark matter, because the LIGO experiment seems to be bringing in more and more of these black hole collisions, and there seem to be more and more of these black holes out there that we didn't really know existed. So we can actually even do this in Space Engine. We can actually just use the star browser here, go into settings and try to find any kind of a black hole within the radius of 10 light years away from us. If I click on this, or actually we might need to change this to uh, maybe, let's just do it like 90 light years. And if we actually search for one, there's at least two right from where we are. So black holes are unusually common and there's quite a lot of them out there. Now, according to calculations, if black holes are dark matter, there should be about 10 billion of them in our galaxy alone. Now we know there's about 400-ish billion stars and 10 billion would be these unusual black holes. And there should be at least one of these black holes within a few light years away from our own sun. Now, we haven't really seen any just yet, and we haven't really detected anything unusual in the vicinity of our solar system, but we haven't really looked for one either. So, for all we know, there might be actually a very interesting, very unusual black hole, maybe about 30 to 60 masses of our sun lurking somewhere in the vicinity of our solar system, and we have no idea that it's even there. And this is us inside a black hole. This is universe closing behind us. And the fact that so many collisions between these black holes have already been detected by LIGO, and the fact that um, none of these collisions have yet been detected in our own solar system, and we don't really see that many black holes in the vicinity, may also mean that we just don't really understand how our galaxies are structured. So for all we know, or for all uh, we care, I guess, maybe the black holes that are the dark matter are actually positioned somewhere away from our own solar system, maybe even on the outskirt of the galaxy and so somewhat in a bubble-like formation around the galaxy, thus holding it together. And we wouldn't really be able to see it very easily either because it's just kind of hard to see black holes unless they interact with matter. 
So it's possible that we didn't really see any black holes during those macho experiments uh, because they are somewhere entirely different positioned in a way where we can't just see them very easily. And the future of this re research, including of course more and more detections by LIGO, will hopefully help us discover where all of these black holes are located and maybe just maybe we'll even find a collision between two black holes in our own solar system. Or not our own solar system, but our own galaxy, because if it does happen in our own solar system, we'll probably be uh, dead pretty quick. For now though, the only black hole we kind of are pretty sure is out there and we understand the most is this one right here, known as Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And even this black hole wasn't really that well understood a few years ago. So in the next decade or so, chances are we're actually going to reach a much, much better understanding of everything about our own uh, galaxy and our own universe. And we're going to be able to actually quite confidently say what exactly this dark matter business is and whether it's actually black holes or something entirely different. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about this in this video and hopefully you enjoyed it. And let's finish it by entering the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Say goodbye to the universe. Space out. And as always, bye bye.